My name is Georgiana Wilton, and I'm a scientist at the University of Wisconsin Department of Family Medicine. This presentation is third in a series of podcasts based on the Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders Competency-Based Curriculum Development Guide developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The goal of the series is to educate medical and allied health providers about the prevention, identification, and treatment of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. This third podcast addresses models of addiction. In this podcast, we'll be talking about the concepts and models of addiction as they apply to women of childbearing age. According to the CDC, over 50% of women ages 18 to 44 use alcohol. 12% of women binge drink. Women who binge drink are at increased risk of an unintended pregnancy and an alcohol-exposed pregnancy. For more information on the effects of alcohol on pregnancy, please check out podcast 1 or 4 in this series. If we look at the conceptual models, society has viewed alcohol-related problems differently over time. We can look at the moral concept. Our personal choices are what cause our problems, or we're somehow being punished for our sins. Socioculturally, looking at social factors causing problems, and the treatment then would involve education and economic opportunity. Psychological model, looking at model behavior or poor skills causing our problems, and so we'll need to teach coping skills. Looking at addiction as a disease is a progressive disease caused by biological, personality, or spiritual dysfunction. And finally, the biomedical model, where addiction is a brain disease with both genetic and environmental factors. So let's look at this clinically. If a woman drinks one or two drinks each week, should she be worried about her health or her use? First, we want to make sure we're speaking the same language and define what a standard drink is. A standard drink is... 0.6 ounces of absolute alcohol. That's equivalent to a 12 ounce can of beer or a wine cooler, five ounces of standard wine, or a shot, one and a half ounces of spirits. We know that alcohol can affect our entire body. It's a central nervous system depressant. It's rapidly absorbed from the stomach and small intestine into the bloodstream. It's metabolized in the liver by enzymes, which can only metabolize a small amount of alcohol at a time. And, fairly intuitively, the more alcohol one consumes, the greater the effect. We react individually to alcohol based on our age, our sex, race or ethnicity, genetic factors, our physical condition, how much food we've consumed before or during drinking, how quickly the alcohol was consumed, and the use of other prescription or non-prescription medicines. Women often ask us if they can drink at the same level as their spouse and have the same effects. There are specific health risks for women drinkers. Sex differences in our body structure and chemistry cause women to absorb more alcohol and take longer to break it down and remove it from our bodies. Alcohol can have a dramatic negative effect on women including liver disease, impact on the brain, impact on the heart, cancer including increased risk for breast cancer, sexual assault, and alcohol exposed pregnancy. Certain factors can increase the risks of developing alcohol problems, including ethnicity, age at first drink, with the greatest risk being if the drink was taken before the age of 14, mental health disorders, marital status, and use by a partner. When we think about guidelines to minimize risk, the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism's recommendations for women include no more than seven drinks per week, no more than three drinks on any day, keeping in mind both the single day and weekly limit must not be exceeded, no drinking at all if underage, taking certain medications, or pregnant or trying to become pregnant. Of course, low risk does not mean no risk. Additional terminology we'll want to be aware of, craving, a strong need or urge to drink, loss of control, not being able to stop once alcohol use has started, Physical dependence, where you might experience withdrawal symptoms such as nausea, sweating, shakiness, or anxiety after stopping drinking. And tolerance, the need to drink greater amounts of alcohol to get the same high. The DSM defines diagnostic criteria for both alcohol abuse and alcohol dependence. And while overlapping, they both include a maladaptive pattern of alcohol use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress. When looking at the addictive process, we typically think of it as a multi-stage process. Acquisition of the addicted state, maintenance as a chronically relapsing state, and long-term personal and social consequences. 
Other factors can influence addictive behavior, including family factors, stress, observance of domestic violence between family members, experience of abuse by a parent, sibling, or other relative, isolation, and of course, a family history of alcohol abuse or alcoholism. There's also a link between alcohol and co-occurring psychiatric disorders. Among adults with serious mental illness, over 23% are alcohol dependent or abuse alcohol, and nearly 30% report binge drinking. Alcohol abuse increases the risk for suicide, and symptoms such as anxiety, agitation, and paranoia can be either manifestations of alcohol intoxication or symptoms of withdrawal. There are many options for treatment and intervention for alcohol disorders. You can follow this link for a substance abuse treatment facility locator to find the treatment facility closest to you. Tips and tools for screening, brief intervention, and treatment can be found in the second podcast in this series. And SAMHSA's treatment improvement protocols provide tips and tools to successfully navigate the system. For more information, contact the Great Lakes FASD Regional Training Center. If you're outside of the Great Lakes region, you can follow this link to find a regional training center closest to you.